In this lesson, we'll talk about color and background related CSS properties. Now, some HTML5 elements can have a foreground color or just color, while others can have a background color, while others can have a, a background image, and that image can be configured in a number of different ways. So to kind of exercise this, I created another one of my little experiments like I talked about in the previous lesson, where I went through and just created every variation possible so that I could get this firmly ensconced in my mind as the differences, what the different values were uh, possibly, and be able to talk about this intelligently. Great exercise, I highly recommend that you do something similar to this for yourself, create a little cheat sheet, okay? So we're gonna start with various ways to define color in CSS, and there are quite a few actually. The three ways that I have demonstrated here are defining using uh, named colors like blue, black, white, red, so on. And there's uh, quite a few, I think there's, uh, I don't know, 120, 240, uh, it, it's several, uh, several dozen different ways uh, and you can just search for uh, CSS color named and uh, Bing will bring back some websites that have a definitive list of every possible value you could look for and that's the way I usually do it when I go about to work with colors uh, or you can use a hexadecimal value and a lot of uh, applications like Photoshop and my preference is fireworks but there are other tools as well that use hexadecimal values uh, whenever you're um, kind of laying out what your web page might look like uh, and then there's also RGB values which stands for red green blue and the combination of those uh, values between 0 and 255 will create every color that's possible at least you know uh, that are web safe anyway. There are a number of other different ways to define colors as well. Uh, RGB percentages, there's uh, something called HSL which stands for hue, saturation, and lightness. Then there's RGBA and HSLA which uh, are uh, include alpha transparency as well. And so, you know, for me personally, I stick with either name colors or hexadecimal values for consistency sake. Still, if you're so inclined, you're probably more likely if you have a tool that automatically generates these values for you then you can use any of these ways in defining a color in CSS. So you can see that in several of these cases uh, I work with div tags. If you were to look at the HTML for lesson 14 and uh, the div semantically is probably correct for this because we're not really giving any true meaning to our document just a general area that we can style so I feel good about that um, and you can see in this case I have the style attribute and I start defining in line the various styles so in this case I set a background color as well as the sizing of the div itself and the margins for spacing purposes or what have you that's not as interesting as the actual values we've set here for example using a hexadecimal value I can get a light gray color in my div here I'm going to set background images. Background image set to none leaves it empty. Uh, or I can use uh, an image, in this case a 50 by 50 image. Uh, where did I get this from? It's a funny little utility that somebody put out there called uh, placekitten.com. And you can use these as placeholders on your web pages. You just send in a width and a height. Uh, formatted like so and it will give you back an image that you can use temporarily on your website as you're do going through development okay so I just use that for this purpose um, so you can see uh, by default it will tile uh, your image to fit the space available within your uh, your block style element we'll talk about block style elements when we talk about block properties two lessons from now okay uh, here we can set the properties of the background. Uh, by default you can see it will repeat or we can set repeat X to only tile our background image uh, um, using the X axis or vertically or rather horizontally and then use the repeat Y value to repeat that tile um, uh, vertically or we can use the no repeat which will only put the image in your background of whatever whatever element just one time. Uh, furthermore, you can set the background position so that you can position it. In this case, right top, left bottom, so and so on. There's also a background attachment. However, 
it seems to be only applicable to the entire web page and so I didn't create a firm example of this you can see how it's used uh, here uh, there's two possibilities scroll and fixed the scroll uh, means that the background image does scroll with the page whereas fixed means the background image does not scroll when you scroll the web page okay and then finally I wanted to point out that many of these uh, CSS properties will accept shorthand so you can kind of stack all of the settings on a single line if you want to same thing with with border as we'll see and uh, uh, I think font has that capability as well in this case you just need to put the color or image optionally put the position optionally put the repeat optionally put the attachment value and so on and it will figure it out okay so that's really all I have to say about it again a valuable exercise for me background colors background images used often web development make sure if you're, you're at least familiar with uh, the various properties and then just experiment as you're building your web pages so hope that helps. See you in the next video. Thank you.